Hi, I'm Pierre Du Bois, founder of Zamana Analytics and a contributor to IT Pro Today. And today I'd like to talk to you about Python, or more specifically, dictionaries. Now, you may have seen dictionaries before, but I think, honestly, it's probably one of the best places to start if you are new to Python. It's basically a container of key value pairs. And the reason why I think that it's a really great place to start is that those key value pairs are often things that we see in everyday life. Uh, we see this in business, we see this in uh, nonprofits, and pretty much everywhere. And so it's a great way of trying to understand how to construct either software or maybe a dashboard for a data model, or these days even learning a little bit about large language models. Let's take a closer look. So what I've done here is within our studio, I've created this very, very simple script. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and run it. And you'll see here that it's going to use uh, Reticulate to run the Python script within our studio. And I'm going to enter in these the key value pairs uh, for cities. This is basically cities, um, city temperatures in Fahrenheit. And these are just a couple of cities, New York, Boston, San Francisco, Chicago, and Houston, each with a temperature associated with it. So one of the values of the key value pair within dictionaries is that it assigns a key to a value. There's no such thing as having two values assigned to the same key within a dictionary. So, it's a, so there's a certain order to this. If we want to see it, we can always use the print function to call our dictionary object, in this case, cities in F. And you can see here, you list out all the entries that we have for key value pairs. Um, this is, now for temperatures, is, is not the only application for dictionaries. You can have stock prices. I have a quick example here, I'm gonna go ahead and run. These are stock prices for Ford, Apple, and uh, Alphabet. Um, and again, you can run a print to take a look at those. And keep in mind, your dictionary does not have to, the values in your dictionaries do not have to be just the uh, something numeric or even characters. It could be a mix. I put this example for cars in here so you can see this. So this is one of my favorite cars, the Chevrolet Corvette. So I have make, model, the model year, and I've put in here engine size. The engine size on the newest one, on the ZL, the ZR1, which is a trim level that I'm indicating here, has a 5.5 liter uh, V8 engine. So if we put this in here, you can see that all this is a mix of characters and also some numeric in there. So there's some there's different values you can have of, of, of uh, values <laughs> in a uh, dictionary. So let's say that we have another list of dictionaries that we want to add. Let's say for our cities. Let's go back to our cities example. You can see um, here I've put um, second cities some uh, additional ones, Miami, Dallas, Seattle, Atlanta, Charlotte. Okay, so we create our list. Um, now we can mix and merge these together using a merge function. This is what this line uh, 39 is about. Each one of our objects, our uh, dictionary ob dictionaries, has a double asterisk in front of them. Those double asterisks is telling Python to merge these in together, and we're gonna assign them into one dictionary, all cities. So if we run this, let's run our print, you can see that this is both dictionaries combined and merged into one. Now, if you want to call a particular uh, value uh, within a dictionary, uh, the, fun the syntax for this is just the dictionary and then the um, brackets and then the name of the key. So if I call Chicago, for example, for the value X and print it, this is what the temperature is um, in Chicago. So it gets that value. And keep in mind that this, the, the variable X can always be updated with another key and, key and value. So if I, so in this uh, line 44, if I run for Miami, I'd get the Miami temperature, 95. Now, to play around with dictionaries, um, there's there's methods that will allow you to actually um, to go through and, and call either a key or a value or even to add um, and you use these methods uh, throughout there's there's several of them um, there's I just want to go through a few of these just so you get the idea but the basic structure is the dictionary dot and then the method itself so for example right here in line 49 
if I am calling um, our all cities in F uh, dictionary, and I want to get uh, the value of a key, in this case Chicago, if I run that, two things will happen. First of all, it will get that actual value, which again, you can see here was 80, which is like we did back a little while ago. But if you notice, I don't have to call out the print function to, to have it appear. It's just going to do that automatically. And that's how these methods are designed. And there's several different types of methods that you can learn online. There's ones for keys where you get all the keys of a dictionary. So if we wanted to go through that, here's all our keys appearing right here. If we want to get all the values, that's possible. Um, again, we get all the values um, within our dictionary. And then we can also up. We can also use. Um, there's two. You can also update a uh, dictionary. There's two ways of doing it. The most um, basic way is just using uh, is calling out the specific uh, key and then it, setting an equal sign to the new value we want. So let's say that for Chicago, since we we find out that the temperature is really 70 and not 80, um, we can just assign 70 to our key, like so. And then when we print it you'll see that Chicago is called out at 70 among all our, 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 um, among all our key, va key values. Um, the other way is to also um, use the update method. So again, we have dictionary.update, and then we have our key, um, Chicago. And this time, we find out that we really should have had 75. We keep playing around with the number. So, <laughs> so in this case, when we call it, um, you'll see that Chicago is called out at 75. Um, you can also uh, remove an existing key value pair. So we can remove Chicago by using um, our dictionary, period, and then the uh, method pop. So we can take that out. And you can see that Chicago is taken out of our all cities in uh, Fahrenheit. And then we can also um, add a key value pair. Again, let's say that we wanted to add Santa Fe and Cleveland. We can add a, a series of these. So if we run it, and then run a print, you can see that, sh that um, Santa Fe and Cleveland are added at the very end of our uh, key value pair. Um, now, let's scroll down a little bit. Uh, actually, I'm going to add, before we do, I'm going to add Cincinnati into that. So one okay. of the things you can do with dictionaries is to run calculations when you need to. For example, uh, our temperatures for each city are in Fahrenheit, and we might want to have them in Celsius. So with the dictionary comprehension function, uh, we can actually make a conversion, um, not only uh, taking each uh, key and value pair and converting each from uh, degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius. So running lines through 72 through 75, I've just um, run for each one of our um, key value pairs. And as you can see, um, when I print it, it gives me out the temperatures in degrees Celsius. So, what, so with dictionaries, you have a number of different ways of uh, running not only calculations, but doing it in memory such that it saves some time um, and, and save some uh, complica uh, complications down the way when there's a lot of calculations to be done. And we're seeing some applications for this for large language models. For example, if you were to use Langchain, um, many, many times the uh, variables that are passed uh, are usually some into, temp into prompts are usually um, dictionaries. Uh, there's also memory components that rely on the dictionary structure, so it makes it a little easier to do certain calculations and also to have some memory when people are making prompts at the, at the, uh, on, at the line. And then finally, uh, when you're using LangGraph, the nodes that are created also rely on dictionaries. So they, they use those as a, as a key and then value to, to put some sort of uh, identification for a node and some sort of value associated with that node. So if you're learning Python, give dictionaries a try. You'll find it much easier to grasp the key concepts behind Python and be able to build your knowledge base.